Low voltage EEG is characterized by waveforms with amplitudes below 10 to 20 microvolts. It's often associated with diffuse slowing of the background rhythm and poor reactivity particularly in critically ill patients. In this EEG sample, we see a recording from a patient who sustained a head injury in a motor vehicle accident. The sensitivity setting is two microvolts per millimeter, and this patient, no waveforms exceed 20 microvolts in amplitude. This pattern is considered to be abnormal due to several key factors, and here's why. Number one, clinical context. The patient has a history of significant trauma and the presence of low voltage EEG in this context strongly suggests global cerebral dysfunction. In cases of severe head injury, low voltage EEG often correlates with diffuse axonal injury, cerebral edema, or other widespread disruptions in brain function. A hallmark of abnormal low voltage EEG is the combination of low amplitude and poor reactivity to stimuli such as somatosensory or auditory stimulation. In this recording, the absence of waveforms exceeding 20 microvolts and the likely lack of reactivity further supports its pathological nature. Number three, absence of alpha and beta frequencies. Normal EEGs typically show admixed alpha and beta activity, even in the resting state. The absence of these higher frequencies in this patient indicates a disruption in cortical activity consistent with severe dysfunction. Clinical significance. The low voltage EEG in this case reflects the brain's response to significant trauma. A study in neuroclinical care highlights that this pattern, especially in patients with traumatic brain injuries, is often associated with poor neurological outcomes, including prolonged recovery or irreversible damage. Okay, here are the key takeaways. Abnormality is context dependent. Low voltage EEG can appear in rare, healthy individuals, but in cases like this, it is highly abnormal. Critical indicator. This pattern underscores the need for a detailed clinical evaluation to assess the severity of cerebral dysfunction and guide management. And that's it, folks. Recognizing these kind of patterns is crucial for identifying and managing severe brain injuries. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another Two Minute Tuesday video.